hallelujah. A blessed Sunday to all of you out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you're running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, Why Having Faith in God is Important. The text is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you hear the word faith, what do you think of? Whether you realize it or not, Faith is an essential part to our life. That's faith, being sure of what you're hoping for, being certain of what you don't see or experience yet. Hebrews 11 verse 1 states, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith isn't just a notion that some people hold unto in tough times. Faith is an important element to all human life on earth. Life is precious, but it can be remarkably difficult at times. Faith is what helps you get through illuminating the pathway in times of darkness, helping to give us strength in times of weakness. Without faith, we are nothing. Thomas Aquinas said this, To one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. While life can be hard at the best of times, faith is knowing deep down inside that things will get better. It's taking the next step when you can't see the entire staircase. Remember that faith is taking the next step when you can't see the entire staircase. Simply put, life would fail to have reason if we didn't have faith. Faith then is just as important as the air we breathe. People have moved mountains with their faith. Even when situations seemed dire and bleak, it was their faith that carried them through. So let me give you a few steps here on why faith is important. Number one, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith is impossible to please God as believers, as Christians. If you do not have faith, it's impossible to please God. We need to be a people who please God. For without faith is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The second point we can learn is that Jesus acknowledges and notices our level of faith. In fact, you look at Matthew eleven twenty eight. Then Jesus answered and said unto a woman, Great is your faith, let it be to you as you desire. And a daughter was healed from that very hour. In Matthew 14, 31, And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? So in this, both these cases, the woman was a Gentile who had faith that Jesus was the only hope for a sick daughter. She was granted a request and the other one was Peter. So we see Jesus focuses on our faith. So faith is so crucial for a Christian. Number three, we see faith moves God to cause miracles in our life. You look at Mark chapter two, verse five, when Jesus saw his friends, Faith. He said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven you. The lame man got up, grabbed his mat and went home. Jesus noticed the four friends of this paralytic man, how they tore the roof apart and let down that man, how they had that great faith. Jesus acknowledged their faith and because of that faith, the paralytic man was healed. James chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. Unless we ask in faith without doubting, we won't receive what we're asking for. So faith is crucial for you to see your prayer answer. Faith is crucial for you to see the, the healing, the breakthroughs, the blessing, the favor. 
Faith is what you need. The next reason why we need to have faith is faith strengthens us during trials. Many of us will fall flat on our face. Many of us will end up with depression, will end up in asylum if we do not have faith. Because of the pressures of life, because of the difficulties, because of the challenges, because of the struggles, because of the uncertainties in life, if you do not have faith, Faith, you and I will fall flat on our faith. You and I will be torn to pieces. You and I can't be able to carry the heavy load to see the uncertainties, to be assured of tomorrow. The only way that you and I can take these pressures of life and go on pressing on towards our goal is when you have faith. Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. James 2.3 says, The testing of faith produces patience. First Peter 1.7, That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory in the revelation of Jesus Christ. The next reason we must have faith is faith helps to encourage others. Faith is contagious. When you have faith, your children will have faith. When you have faith, the people who come in contact with you will desire to have faith. So faith is so important to strengthen other people. People are observing us. People are looking at us. People are observing us, especially in times of difficulty, times of trials. How are we handling ourselves? Are we truly trusting in the Almighty God? Or are we simply professing? Are we truly standing upon the promises of God in the worst of time like Daniel when he was in the lion's den when the three Hebrew children were thrown in the furnace of fire they were people who had faith and because of that God's name was glorified and they were promoted so we need to have faith because faith encourages people. Colossians 1, 3 to 4, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. 2 Timothy 1, 5, then I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwell first in your grandmother Louise and in your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Next reason we need to have faith is faith is the foundation of salvation. Faith, because of faith, you and I are saved. The Bible says, Galatians 2.16, a man is not justified by works of law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we are believing Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Ephesians 2.8-9, 1 Timothy 6.11-13 says the same thing. The seventh reason why you and I need to have faith is faith brings great blessing. When you hold on to the faith of God, when you hold on to God, when you keep believing in God, when you keep believing in the promises, even though times are bleak, even though uncertainty, even though you're hitting rock bottom, even though financially you got nowhere else to get money, you owe the creditors, you owe the people, you need to pay your staff, you need to have food for your family, you don't know what to do, but still you're going to hold on to God because you know God will never leave us nor forsake us. God will not let his loved one go hunger and starve. God is always there for us. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And when you trust God, God will bless you abundantly at the end. And one of the examples is Job. How the devil reasoned that Job was faithful because he had been blessed with so much in life. Family, money, land and respect. But the devil proposed that should God take any of these things away from Job, he will no longer be the faithful man that God held him up to be. The devil claimed that Job would curse God and that his point would be all but proven. God of course disagreed. So Job went through many trials. Job lost everything he had worked for so hard to create over the years. His livestock, all his money, his family, his friends, his health. However, even when his wife told him he should curse God, Job didn't. He remained faithful. Afterward, God restored all of Job's worldly possession, family and health 
to add to that God multiplied that Job once said many times over. The moral of the story is whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Remember that. The eighth reason why we need to have faith is faith in God allows you or empowers you to discover your purpose in life. When you have faith, you'll be able to know who you are in Jesus Christ. You'll be able to know your purpose in this life and you'll be able to fulfill that purpose. We need to have faith. We need to keep running the race. Faith overcomes stress, anxiety and fear. In life, we face many challenges, many difficulties. This world is not a bed of roses. Remember that it might be a bed of thorn, but it's never a bed of roses. What God promises that he, what God promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So what we need to do is to have strong faith, mature faith. Tested faith. So no matter what comes, we are not going to succumb to fear. We are not going to succumb to anxiety. We are not going to succumb to stress. We are not going to say, what if, what if, what if. We are not going to look at the negative, but we are going to hold on to God. We are going to believe in God. We know we serve a good God, a God who loves us, a God who cares for us, a God who desires the best for you. We are going to have faith in God. You are going to hold on to the promises. You are going to pray the promises. You are going to meditate on the promises. You are going to meditate on all the attributes of God daily until you see your breakthrough because God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will make a way even when there seems to be no way. Remember that faith gives people hope for the future, motivation to keep going, and inspiration to find something more in life. It allows people to feel like they aren't alone. Yes, you and I are never alone because God is always with us. The Holy Spirit is with us, empowering us, leading us, guiding us, revealing the truth of heaven to us that there are things that bring happiness into your life. People who have faith believe in taking one step at a time and they do their best to persevere through life's trials. Faith can be difficult, but it is rewarding. With the right mindset, anything is attainable. Faith allows people to look towards the future with a positive mindset and encourages them or stirs them up to feel hopeful knowing that God is with them and God will surely make a way. There are many verses in the Bible that Tells us to have faith. Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Ephesians 3, 6 and 7, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we live by faith and not by sight. John eleven forty. did not I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Mark 9, 23, if you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. John 11, 25, 26, I am the resurrection and life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Matthew 21, 22, if you believe, you receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Mark 10, 52, go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And we go on and on and on of the promises for people who have faith. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 says, Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. How do you grow in faith? The second section of this sermon is how do you grow in faith? So you can overflow with revelation, with blessings, with prosperity, with thankfulness. It is a process. Smith Wigglesworth said this. How can one come to possess great faith? Now listen, here is the answer to that. First the blade, then the year, then the full corn of the year. Faith must grow by soil, moisture and exercise. In the first section of this sermon, I've identified enough points and verses to show you the importance of having faith. Each one of us needs to desire to grow in faith. 
to be matured in faith because without faith is impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot see breakthroughs. Without faith, you cannot receive the blessings that you pray. Now I'm going to present to you seven ways to make your faith grow. Lesson number one is feed your faith through the word of God or with the word of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus said in Luke 4, 4, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It means that as bread is needed for us to live physical life, we need the spiritual bread. That is the word of God. So that spiritually we will be strong. So what we need is the living word. You and I need to read the Bible on a regular basis. Not just one verse here and one verse there. But we need to systematically read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And keep going on and on on a daily basis. We need to be so saturated with the word because faith covered by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Second Timothy verse 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That a man of God will be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That why it's important for us to study the word of God. James 4, 7, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Someone said you get faith by studying the word. Study that word until something in you knows that you know and that you do not just hope that you know. When you study the word and study the word, you know and you know and you know who God is, what God is, and what are the promises, and you hold on to it. So we need to study the word. Psalms 34, 8, Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Psalms 119, 103, Your words are a choice. Your words are so choice, so tasty. I prefer them to the best home cooking. With your instruction, I understand life. The message Bible writes, John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So when you learn to study the word and saturate the word in your life, the Holy Spirit will help you and bring the word alive and stir up your faith and bring to remembrance the word. That's why we need to study the word. We all need to be students of the word. Smith Wigglesworth wrote this. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I feel. I am moved only by what I believe. Matthew Barnett wrote this. Faith is believing that God is going to take you places before you even get there. Mark Victor Hansen, the author of the Chicken Soup books, said, your belief determines your action. Your action determines your result. But first you have to believe. Another quote from Smith Wigglesworth. Fear looks, faith jumps. Fear never fails to obtain its object. If I leave you as I found you, I am not God's channel. I am not here to entertain you, but to get you to the place where you can laugh at the impossible. That's what I want to do for this sermon, that you'll be able to laugh at the impossible. You'll be able to laugh at the difficult times you're going through because you have faith in God. You know that God will make a way. So believing in the impossible as possible is faith. Nothing, nothing is impossible to God. For with God, Luke 137, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. The second lesson for you to grow in faith is exercise your faith by your action. The first is you need to read the word. You need to chew up the word. Second is you need to exercise your faith. Putting feet to your faith. James 2, 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Picture this. Faith and works are each and all in your rowboat of life. They work together to move you forward. Genuine faith is validated by actions that follow. Likewise, actions done without faith are useless. We must always 
Act in faith. James explains this in James 2, 17, 18. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. So we see many people move in the supernatural, experience miracles because they acted upon their faith. They put feet to their faith. Peter acted in faith when Jesus said, come. He got out of the boat and walked on the water. With the boisterous wind and the rough sea, he exercised faith. And because of that, he experienced a miracle. In the same way, Moses acted in faith and took his rod and challenged Pharaoh. And he performed signs and wonders over and over and over in Egypt until Pharaoh released the people. The widow woman acted in faith when Elisha told her to gather all the empty barrels you can and pour that little oil you have into the barrel. She had to act out of faith. She couldn't keep that barrel of oil, that little oil, and expect God to do the miracle. She had to sow. She had to give. And by acting out of faith, all the empty barrels were filled. She could pay off all the creditors and live on the rest. Another woman acted in faith when Elijah went and asked her to bake him a cake. She said, I have a little oil and a little flour. We are supposed to bake a cake, me and my child, and die. Elisha said, go bake me a cake first. She sold. She acted out in faith. And God caused the oil and flour not to end. Throughout the famine, she was provided for and blessed. The lame man acted in faith when Jesus said, rise up. He stood up and lifted up his mat. The four friends acted in faith when they couldn't enter the house to see Jesus. The house was jam-packed. What they did, they climbed up the roof. They tore the roof apart. They let down the lame man. When Jesus saw the faith, he recognized their faith and forgave the man and the man was healed. The woman with the issue of blood acted out in faith. She was weak. She has no money. She was not supposed to be in public. Yet she pushed herself through and said that if only I touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, I'll be healed. She acted out. She didn't sit back and give excuses and, and try to hope somebody will come. She acted out. So many miracles will happen in your life when you start to act. When you start to step out in faith, when you give unto the Lord, when you give generously, you don't hold back. You trust God like the woman with the oil. She poured the last oil she had to the prophet as the prophet said. The other widow gave to Elijah the last of her oil and her flour. She baked the cake and God blessed. So I encourage you, you want to see miracles in your life, you need to act out in faith. It's not enough to say we have faith. We can profess we have faith in church. We can sing a faith song. We can speak languages of faith song. It only comes through when you act it out. When difficulties come, problems come, situations come, mountains come, Goliaths come, river come, fire come. Are you willing to trust God? Are you like the Daniels, the three Hebrew children? Are you like Elijah? Are you like the man of God who will stand firm no matter what? And these are the people who will glorify God. And people for years will be talking of their testimony. James Baldwin wrote this. I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. People are looking at us. God is looking for us. God is looking at us. You want to say you have faith. You need to act out of faith. You want to say you believe in God for healing. You need to start acting out. You want to say you believe in God for provision. You need to start to be obedient in your giving, your sowing, and your tithes, and your offering. You need to give generously and give unto the Lord. And you see God blessing you. The third lesson on how to develop your faith is to speak words of faith. As a preacher, I'm sure all preachers love when people speak back to them, when people shout, Amen, Hallelujah, preach it, pastor. I mean, we enjoy that and we get stirred up and we preach more vibrantly. And there was an incident of a story 
I heard once about a preacher who had a congregation who would talk back to him during his sermon as they got excited about their future. One Sunday morning, the preacher said, this church is like a crippled man who needs to get up and walk under the power of Jesus. The congregation replied with excitement, let him walk, preacher, let him walk. Then the preacher said, this church, like Elijah on Mount Carmel, has got to run. The congregation replied with excitement again. Let it run, preacher, let it run. Then the preacher said, this church has got to mount up on wings like eagles and fly. The congregation replied with excitement. Let it fly, preacher, let it fly. Then the preacher added, now if this church is going to fly, it's going to take money. The congregation replied with excitement again. Let it walk, preacher, let it walk. This is not exactly what I would call speaking your feet. Mark 5, 8, and he said unto them, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? He answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. And he said unto him, come out of the man. Jesus spoke to the man that's possessed with evil spirit. He spoke. That's what is important for us to do is to speak words of faith, speak words of authority, speak words of blessing, speak words of healing, speak words of growth, speak words of restoration, speak words of provision, speak words of prosperity, speak what you want in life, take the promises God, speak, don't pray something and speak the opposite, you're cancelling that prayer or that blessing, you pray, you believe, you speak, you act, then you see the miracle. Amen. John eleven forty three. 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He cried with a loud voice. He spoke. Mark 4, 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. That's the power of the words you have. So we need to speak faith, not that. Not failure, not fear, not hopelessness, but we speak life, we speak growth, we speak prosperity, we speak blessings, we speak the promises of God. Romans 4, 17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Mark 11, 23, verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he said shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he said. So speaking is so important. The fourth lesson to develop your faith is do not doubt. Free your faith from negativity. Brother Kenneth Hagin, I think many of us have heard about him, have listened to his sermons, have listened to his teaching. He says, feed your faith and starve your doubts. Faith and fear are inversely proportional. Faith and doubt are inversely proportional. So feed your faith and not your doubt. Feed your faith and not negativity. Feed your faith and not fear. So God what you're speaking, God, what you listen to, what you hear, what you read, who you're talking to. If you listen to people who talk nothing but negative news, you will come very negative and it's very hard for you to have great faith. So it's important for you to listen to the right people, read the right books, follow the right people, listen to the right sermons, be with the right crowd, keep on reading the promises of God. F.F. F. Bosworth, the author of Christ the Healer said, faith and doubt cannot live in the same house. James 1.6, only it must be in faith that he asks without wavering, without hesitating, without doubting, for the one who wavers Hesitates doubt is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. So you cannot be doubting and expect to move in faith. 
You got to be strong. You got to believe. You got to hold on to the promises. When doubt leaves your life, you are presented with unlimited opportunities. Matthew 21, 21 says, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. That is faith, belief, without doubting. You want to see an experience? You want to grow in faith? You want to see miracles in your life? You need to remove doubt from your life, remove negativity. You need to speak words of faith. You need to speak the promises. You cannot be doubting. Then you will be like a ship that is tossed to and fro in the sea without reaching your destiny. Philippians 4, 6 to 8, be careful for nothing but everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let your request made unto God. A peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind to Christ Jesus. And then in verse 8, he tells us what you must do. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. This is how we need to think and fill our minds with 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, casting down imagination, every height thing exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, only be thou and very courageous. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not, be afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with those ever thou goest. Be strong and courageous, do not doubt, do not be fearful, do not be dismayed. The fifth step or lesson for you to grow in faith is testify and praise God. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 8, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Psalms 34 verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we see how Jehoshaphat faced three different nations that outnumbered them. He went towards the enemy and praised God and thanked God and glorified God. And God caused confusion to come upon the enemy's camp and Jehoshaphat had victory. So there is power when you praise God and thank God and worship God. Even though you are in the midst of situation like Jehoshaphat, the enemy has outnumbered you. The problems are too great for you to handle. You cannot handle it by yourself. You do not have any avenues to come out. You are just going to praise him because in the spiritual realm, you are claiming victory because you know if God is with us, who can be against us? Amen. So I want to encourage you to praise. The sixth lesson for you to grow in faith is prayer. Developing intimacy with God. Prayer is essential for deepening our relationship with Christ and growing in your faith. Prayer is communicating with God in the same way you would with a friend. So prayer is so important. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, he says, Be anxious for nothing but everything to prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call unto me and answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hebrews 7, 25, He is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for us. Hebrews 11, 6, Without faith is impossible to please him for he who draws near to God must believe he is and he is a rewarder of them who seeks him. Draw near to prayer. Jeremiah 29, 13, If you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Prayer is when you go to God and you just enjoy his presence. Prayer is not only asking, give me, give me, give me. Prayer is going to God and exalting his holy name. In the Lord's prayer, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That means you go there and magnify, glorify, thank him, praise him, honor him. You enjoy doing that because you're good God, a faithful God. Thank him for all the wonderful things he's done. Exalt him that you and I are saved. Exalt him that he is the God. He is shalom. He's a healer, provider. Exalt him, praise him for sending his son Jesus to die for you. Exalt him for 
God and never leaves us nor forsake us. He's our Shaddai. He's our refuge. He's our rock. Keep praising him. Sit in his presence. Allow his presence to saturate us. Allow him to speak into our life instead of us just speaking and speaking. Sit there and wait on him. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fail. So we got to learn to persevere. For those who are struggling, who are listening to this sermon, I want you to persevere, press in, keep praying, keep knocking at the door, seek, knock. Is the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock, it shall be opened and you seek and you shall find. It means you keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking because the loving Father will answer. So don't give up. Don't throw in the towel because God will surely make a way. So prayer is so important for you to grow in faith because you build an intimate relationship with God. You allow God to speak into your spirit, man. You are the Holy Spirit to saturate you and stir you up. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Luke 9, 62 says, Why do you keep looking back to your past and having second thoughts about following me? If you turn back, you are not fit for God's kingdom. Luke 18, 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The last lesson for you to grow in faith is seek for an encounter with God. The word encounter means to come face to face with or to come upon or experience, especially unexpectedly, and to experience an encounter with God. It's the best thing that can happen to us. So we see in the Bible, Isaiah had an encounter with God. When King Uzziah died, the Bible says, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above his to the seraphims. Each has six wings and twenty he covered his face and he twenty he covered his feet and we twenty did fly. And one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved and the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me for I am undone because of men are unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of people unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a life coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lord, this had touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and thy sins is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. Isaiah had an encounter with God. When you read the book of Isaiah, you see such a powerful man, such a man with such sharp prophetic words. Why? Because he had an encounter with God. You want to grow in faith? You desire an encounter with God. You desire an encounter with God. When you read the Bible, you pray to God that the Holy Spirit will come alive, that the Holy Spirit will bring the word alive and convict you. The revelation through drama will come. When you come and worship God, you pray for an encounter with God. When you listen to this sermon or listen to any sermon, pray for God to speak to you, for you to have an encounter with God. Because when you have an encounter with God, things change in your life. Your passion grows, your fire for Jesus Jesus grows, the faith gets stirred up to a highest level that you will do anything for Jesus Christ. Saul had an encounter with God. One minute he was hunting Christians and throwing them in the jail. He watched Stephen getting stoned to death and the next minute he was willing to die for Jesus. He was beaten. He experienced a shipwreck. He was stoned. People wanted to kill him but he went on and on and on for Jesus Christ and all because he had an encounter with God. And many other people had got Peter had an encounter with God. When Jesus had come, he came because he had an encounter. He was willing to push away every fear. He forgot about the, the wind and the storm, the boisterous wind, the rough sea. He just walked towards Jesus. Why? Because he had an encounter with God. Elijah was depressed. And when he encountered with God, the depression left him. My upper room experience, the people had encountered with God. They shook the world after that for Jesus. Every fear left them. The lepers had encountered with God and received healing. The woman in the well had encountered with God, became a great evangelist for Jesus Christ. Lazarus had encountered with God. He came out of the tomb and was alive. And many other people. So in closing, we need an encounter with God. So I encourage you, to go through this sermon because we need faith. 
Faith is so essential for all of us. For us to be victorious, for us to be overcomers, for us to have sanity, for us to go through the difficulties of life, the rigors of life, the challenges of life, and come out victorious, we need to have faith. So I encourage you to listen to this sermon over and over and learn from this and grow in faith. God bless you. Shalom.